NKU men's basketball preview show for the 2014-2015. This is the NKU men's basketball preview program for the 2014-2015 season. I'm Jim Kelch, along with head coach Dave Beasold, senior Chad Jackson, junior Jalen Billups. And coach, let's start with you by uh, looking back just for a moment at last year. You guys win nine games and you had, if not the youngest, certainly one of the youngest teams in the country with no seniors, one junior. You upgrade that a little bit this year. You have a couple of seniors. But those freshmen and sophomores have moved up. So if nothing else, you gain experience last year going into this year, and that's got to be a good thing. Oh, absolutely. We felt great about you know the opportunity that they had to get out on the floor, um, getting the, into a lot of minutes for all these, these young kids. They were in a number of situations throughout the year, whether it be um, close games um, at the free throw line in big situations, having to defend in big situations. Um, I, and I think what it, it taught them and gave them an idea was how hard it is to get through the college season because we had some very good moments. And then I think, I, I think they really at times hit the wall as young kids understanding the length of that college season and how demanding it is, not only physically, but mentally also. So we're excited about you know, the opportunities they had last year to help us grow in the process of growing up and, and being a, a much more consistent team this year. And I guess on the plus side of having all those younger players, you come into this year not having to show so many new guys the system that you're trying to run, the way you run a practice, the way things go throughout the course of day one to the end of the season. You do have some new guys, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. But it almost gives you a little bit of a jump start, doesn't it, getting things going? Oh, absolutely. They know, they know the routine. They know how the practice is si situated. They know what's expected. And they know the system. Um, there's a few little different things we'll be doing, but all those things you don't have to teach. It's more time they're able to actually play and get chemistry together and work together on the floor. So it's been, it's been a, a, a great um, advantage to have that, um, that experience in those kids a year older into the system and program. And like we said, we only have two new additions to this year's team that haven't gone through um, practices with us. So it's been much easier transition. We mentioned that there are some new players this year, and uh, we will talk about them, but one of the guys that's coming back this year is a senior, Chad Jackson. Chad, one of the two seniors on this team, both Jacksons, not related, the other being uh, the junior college transfer, Jordan. But Chad, last year was a redshirt year for you. How difficult was it for you to come in day in, day out, watch what was going on, not be able to try to help your teammates? Uh, I don't think it was so much difficult as it was um, just knowing or just realizing that it was the right thing to do. Um, I gained a lot of experience looking from a different perspective, uh, just realizing what it takes to be successful and uh, just trying to help these guys, these guys out day in and day out. Did your game improve, and that may sound funny because you weren't playing, but did your game, do you think, improve by working on specific things and not having to uh, uh, go through game practices and the like, but you were able to work on individual things more? Yeah, yeah, of course, definitely. That's one of the main reasons why I did what I did. That and I just gained a lot of more confidence in myself, uh, in my game. Taking that year off just really uh, gave me a chance to just sit back, relax, and just realize what it took for me to take my game to the next level. So. And Jalen Billups, a junior, uh, last year you get a full year in. Of course, two years ago you had uh, the problems with your heart. You overcame those. Uh, how was it for you coming back last year and getting yourself up into game speed again? Well, it was tough for me at first, but um, after about five games I got used to it. Although I did uh, struggle most of the, the majority of the year just because I was out of shape. but. Um, it helped me mentally more than anything. It kind of helped me just like figure out what I need to do the next season just to be better. Size-wise, this team doesn't have the big 6'10", 6'11 guys. So you guys were often going against much bigger bodies inside. How physical was the inside play last year? Oh, it was very physical, very physical. Um, I think the most physical game was Kentucky. It was just yeah. like dealing with like people that make you look like I make Todd like me and Todd they made me look like Todd so just dealing with that and they're fast and strong it was just like kind of rough like adjusting to at first so we talked about winning nine games last year and certainly you guys had won a few more that first year transitioning from D2 to D1 what kind of fire does that give you during the off season, starting with the spring then into the summer and now the fall again to say hey we're better than nine wins we need to collectively get together and work on certain things 
to try to improve ourselves, to get more than nine wins. How, how, how much of a drive is there in you guys because of that? Uh, there definitely is a drive. Um, I know a lot of us were disappointed after uh, the Florida Gulf Coast game and like just immediately jumped, like got to work, like changing our games, losing weight, whatever it took to like for the greater good of the team, so yes. And Chad, and, and I, I imagine it was great for you to finally get to jump back into things yeah. working with your teammates. Right, it was definitely big. Uh, like I said, or oh, like Jalen said, uh, nobody was happy with winning nine games last year, obviously. So I think coming into the preseason and, and the season already starting, uh, we just realized what it takes and what we need to do to be successful. Uh, coaches have been preaching to us what we need to do to be successful. And I think everybody's buying into that system and I think we'll be successful. Dave, we talked about uh, some of the new players that you have this year. You said there are two new players that haven't gone through the system. One who was with you last year as a redshirt that now finally will be able to play this year, and that's Jared Bryant. But talk to us about the new guys you have, uh, Taylor Persons, uh, Jordan Garnett, and then uh, uh, Jared Bryant. Well, Taylor Persons, is he's going to give us some size. He, I know you made a comment to Jalen about you know how physical the post is and being smaller. Well, all of our guys are. And Todd Johnson's five foot nine. The guard from Mercer is six foot four. So it's the same height and strength disadvantage. So it's across the board that each one of them have a positional battle with that that um, element. Taylor Persons allows us to catch up a little bit. He's six two, six three point guard. It's about 225, 230 pounds. So physically, um, a lot of times freshmen aren't ready. He's ready um, to go out there and compete right now. Um, he's a tremendous uh, competitor. And so he, he's going to add a lot to us that way. Jordan Garnett's about a 6'5 um, athlete, and he, he's a, a kid that can defend really well. And that's something that really, really uh, we were lacking last year, defense. We went from 199th ranked in, in the nation. Um, and in one year, we dropped all the way to almost the worst defensive team in America. And so that's something that's it's an emphasis, and Jordan Garnett's capable of helping us in that area. So we feel pretty good about what those two young kids are going to be able to add to the program. But again, they're freshmen, so it takes them some time. What about Jared? Well, Jared's a seasoned guy. I mean, he's he's a guy who's already played Division One basketball. So uh, Jared's biggest thing is his conditioning and being able to um, help us. He's a very bright guy, um, a high basketball IQ. So um, we look at him being able to be a backup to Jalen and, and provide some um, good quality minutes for us. Chad, when Coach was talking about Taylor Persons, you were shaking your head. You were nodding your head saying, yeah, when he mentioned he, he's ready now. What do you like uh, when you look at him? Just his competitiveness on the court. Uh, when you come in as a, or when I came in as a freshman, I just didn't have that, uh, that nature that he has that he brings to the court. He's just very uh, confident in his game. He's a competitor. He makes people around him. He's one of those guys that you hate playing against, but you love being on this team in practice. And uh, thankfully, coaches let, <laughs> let him be on my team most of the <laughs> Most of the time he practices, so I thank him for that. But, yeah, he's just a, a competitive guy. He's going to bring a lot to the, to the team. And, Jared, uh, Coach talked about uh, Bryant backing you up in the post. I would guess it's important for you guys to work together and, and know the strength of one guy, the weakness of another guy. And so when you come out for a few minutes, you don't feel like things have, have gone down when he steps in. You guys work well together? Uh, yes. I, I've known Jared pretty much my whole life, so I, I know a lot of his game. And, like, if I do come out the game and he comes in, I'm not like, not worried at all because I know he'll um, take the load for us, yes. Coach, uh, you've always been a man-to-man -man guy. Will that continue this year uh, as it has? Are you mixing some other things in or how are you guys gonna go about things? Well, we feel like this year we're much more adept to yeah. be able to go back to man-to-man. -to -man. We had to play a lot of zone last year. Um, and it, and I'm, I'm open-minded about it. If it helps us in situations, we're very open-minded and maybe having to go in that, in that direction for various reasons. But um, we've got to get back to being able to guard um, defensively the way we have in the past. And, and we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Offensively, a year ago, you were averaged in the 50s to low 60s. And if you had more than 65, that was a very high-scoring game. Do you see yourself being able to score more this year with, among others, the addition of, of Chad? Uh, again, it, that depends on possessions, and the reason that happens is, you know, we had the control possessions the first year in Division One. We controlled possessions, so when you look at that, it's how many possessions are you putting in the game, and we've got to play a system that allows us to win. That's the biggest thing. Would I let, uh, love to score 120 points? I sure would, but are we built to do that? Um, we're going to do some things a little bit differently um, and, and try to put a few more possessions in the game because I think we can. I think that will benefit us because even though we may not have the size, um, we're quicker 
I think we're quick and I think we're in pretty dang on good shape. Last year, you know, Jalen wasn't in great condition because of the, his situation. So if we're going to try to race something down the floor, he's going to last on the floor about a minute at a time. And, and so your true post player is now in the game, you know, probably about 60% of the time. So you got to be look at the personnel and go, okay, what fits? And, I, and there's some things this year that we'd like to do that we think fits our program and our kids um, that'll make us successful. Last year, you guys started with a Big Ten team on the road in Purdue. Later, as Chad talked about, to, or Jalen talked about, you went down and played at UK. This year, you're almost a member of the Big Ten. You're yeah. starting the year at Wisconsin, going uh, then to Nebraska. Later, you'll go to Chicago to play Northwestern. An ambitious schedule, certainly one that helps the, the, uh, the basketball program in the university from a financial standpoint, but also, I would guess, it, it helps these guys know what that upper level is and how they can compete against them. Oh, absolutely. Those games will always help us. Now, they're hard to recover from. That stretch of Purdue and UK in about 48 hours, that's, that's hard on our guys. It really, really is. But I also always believe in, you know what, and this is, the, this is something I know you'll touch on, but we, we are able to play in the A-Sun tournament this year. Mm -hmm. And that is an absolute blessing for the process and growth of the program in Division I. In order to do that and be successful in that environment, in that travel, you've got to set your kids up to do things like that. And we're not going to face better teams than Wisconsin, Nebraska in 48 hours. That conference tournament is like that. You play, you've got to get on a, a bus or a, or a plane and go to the next spot and play 24 hours later. That's what we're doing. So those games are going to prepare us um, not only for the season, but also for the end of it when we get to that conference tournament. Jared, do you see it like that as well? I mean, you talk about how physical games could be inside, particularly against Kentucky a year ago. When you're looking at Wisconsin, I think they're going to the season pre-ranked number four. Uh, you've got Nebraska, you've got Northwestern, you're going to have West Virginia here. Some of these big name teams in college basketball. Uh, do you take out of it what coach hopes you get out of it? Um, of course, of course. Um, necessarily, I mean, I think it'll help us. At the end of the day, I think, I definitely think it'll help us. Like, we'll be like much more accustomed to playing against guys bigger than us and that um, we'll be able to um, develop a game plan to help us like compete and beat these teams so yes I think it'll help us. We talked about the road schedule and I mentioned West Virginia and uh, I guess slowly but surely you try to get a marquee name to come in and let's face it it's tough when you first get into Division One but you're gonna have uh, the former Bearcats coach Bob Huggins bring his Mountaineers in here from from West Virginia I suspect that the atmosphere will be crazy that night. We sure hope so, and, it, and again, we're very lucky to, to have that happen. That doesn't, it used to be you would go and play two for one, meaning mm -hmm. we'd play twice at West Virginia and they'd come here one time, and that was a standard operating in Division I, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Now that doesn't happen any longer because of, because of money, because when those teams leave their gym, they lose money. Um, so we're very fortunate Coach Huggins gave us this opportunity. Not only there's going to be a, a big atmosphere, but Chad was on the team a couple years ago when we went down there and beat him. So that's still in the back of Coach's mind. And I know it's going to be one heck of an atmosphere and one heck of a battle that night. And we're just so fortunate to be able to bring it to this campus. Chad, what's that like? I mean, Dave just mentioned that you were part of that team that went down there and played in that exhibition game and defeated uh, West Virginia. What's the feeling from a player's perspective when you're out there, when the crowd is going crazy, there's 10, 12,000 people going wild, and you're right in the midst of it, trying to compete, trying to keep your cool against teams like that? Well, it's, it's definitely a, a maturation process, and I think it's going to be huge for us because that's what we're going to see. In a, it's like a tournament atmosphere, uh, and being able to play in the tournament this year, that's, that game is going to help us out uh, particular, particularly um, because the atmosphere is going to be crazy. Like you said, there's going to be... 10 to 12,000 people there, so it's going to be a crazy atmosphere. Um, we just have to go in and stick to the game plan that we have for that game and execute it, and hopefully we come out successful. Well, let's turn our attention now then to uh, the A-Sun Conference. You'll play in your third year in that conference, which this year loses two schools. Mercer, which had a tremendous run uh, a year ago to win the uh, not only the regular season title, but the conference tournament title, East Tennessee State. How much, how much uh, has the A-Sun stepped up in terms of of a notoriety because of what has happened the last two years, first with Florida Gulf Coast two years ago and last year with Mercer? Well, it's a conference that has a lot of respect now, and it also has a blueprint for winning in the NCAA tournament. Those two teams were built a certain way, their schedule was built a certain way, and so what, it, you want to be successful in the conference and then have a chance in the NCAA tournament when you get there, look at the blueprint, and they are both pretty similar on how they were built. Um, Size-wise in the post, um, very good guard play, which always is the, is the key to winning um, anything really, 
Um, so uh, again, nationally they're re really well known and so we're just very thankful that that happens because then when you go out and recruit you can say, yeah, we're this. Mercer just beat Duke the year before, Florida Gulf Coast beat Georgetown and um, San Diego State and we're in the Sweet 16. Those teams are really, really good and that's the talent we've got to, we've got to attract to get, you know, be competitive and win this conference. Chad, Jared, from a, from a player standpoint, what's it mean to you guys to be able to compete in the A-Sun Conference Tournament this year? I think it's huge. Um, it's definitely uh, something that we, we have to play for now. Um, and we have to prepare for that every day in practice. Um, like Coach said, that that's going to be a rough stretch of games, and we have to prepare ourselves mentally and physically to, to endure that tournament um, and hopefully make a run at it. Isn't it great, though, and Jared, we'll get to you in a second, isn't it great to know that when that last regular season game comes up, based on what you did in those 14 conference games, is going to allow you to continue to play? It's got to be a great feeling. Oh, yeah, for sure. Not that those games didn't mean anything in the years before, but now it's, it means a little bit more because that's, that's seeding and that's whatever the case may be. But now that that last, season, or that last regular season game is over, uh, we have the tournament to look forward to, and we got to go out and, and play well in it. Sir? Well, um, piggy, um, piggybacking off of what Chad said, yes, um, it definitely gives us something to play for now. I mean, like, it just felt like the NCAA was punishing us for just, like, being a newer Division One team. But now, like, getting an opportunity to go into, like, postseason play, it just motivated us more just to, like, become better and just, like, you know, show what, like, our talent is. And while you can't go to the NCAA, you perform well in the regular season, you perform well in the conference tournament. There are other postseason opportunities for you, and that, I know that that uh, has to make you feel great. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, so Dave, in wrapping things up, give us kind of a comparison of what we will see this year from your Norris team versus what we maybe saw a year ago. Well, last year I thought we, we were inconsistent on a number of levels with you know, defensive uh, fundamentals and offensive things. Um, and, and that's what we, we need to see different this year. That will be the growth is we're fundamentally more consistent on everything we're trying to do, our scheme um, and, and following game plans and everything like that. And also what we need to be able to do this year is last year, I think seven games came down to the last minute or last possession. We've got to turn those, and, and that changes the season. I believe Lipscomb last year won you know, seven games on the last possession. We lost seven games on the last, that changes your season right there. So now the kids have been in those situations and environments, now they've got to make those plays and make winning plays throughout, um, throughout the game. All right, Dave Beasel, head coach of the Norse, Chad Jackson, senior, Jalen Billups, junior, thanks for your time. Thank oh, you. Thank you very much. All right, guys.